management. Right. If they decide they're going to let let Doug go and his coaching staff, then let's take a look at uh, coaches that could possibly replace him. I've, I have Robert Salaya, the defensive coordinator in San Francisco, at the top of my list. San Francisco's done such a good job this year. Salaya used to be a linebacker coach with the Jaguars. He has familiarity with the organization. And he's going to be a hot name that people are going to want to uh, circle around as a possible replacement somewhere. I've got uh, Eric Bieniemy, the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, on that list. Yeah, I thought about him too. Bieniemy has interviewed for other jobs. I think he interviewed in Miami and with the Jets and didn't get that job. But he's doing such a good job with Patrick Mahomes. I'd be interested to see what he does, especially if he sticks around for more than two years and the Jaguars decide to move on from Nick Foles after 21. I put Dom Capers on that list, and I don't know whether that makes sense or not, but Capers is, called, is a Coughlin guy. He is a defensive assistant. He, he's a special uh, uh, assistant to the defensive coordinator. I could see a scenario where maybe he becomes a head coach and takes over the defense, which means there's an overhaul. You just... Capers, for the most part, was a 3-4 defensive coach with the uh, with the, the, the Steelers um, and worked a 3-4 in Green Bay, I believe, when he was there as defensive coordinator. I have Chris Richard, which is the defensive line coach for the Dallas Cowboys on there, too. He's well-respected. He's young, and uh, he's gotten quite a bit of acclaim for what he's done while he's been with the Cowboys. Okay. All right, the only one, the only name I'll incorporate would be Mike McCarthy. I wonder if he'd be a good fit. Well, no, I well, actually I thought about putting him on there, but I didn't want you to think that I was supporting anything that you're doing. So that. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> That's all right. I'm with you. I got to make sure that all coaches are covered. That's okay. Well, I, I, no, let me ask you this. He'd, he'd be a high profile. I think he'd be a good high profile uh, hire that could excite that fan base, and he has won a Super Bowl. But go ahead. All right, let me ask you this about McCarthy, though. Sure. I don't know. I've never worked with him. Okay, so you've never, okay. I've heard both, but, you know. Well, you know, he's probably had time to, he's probably had time to cool off a little bit. I'm sure he's rethought it. This will be his right. second go around. Okay. Humble pie. Right. He's, a, he's somebody they could bring in. You don't know. Um, you know, it's, we're all speculating here, too. That's why we're we on the show. We have fun doing this stuff, don't we? Oh, I know. It's wonderful, isn't it? Thursday, and then on Sunday, they could start running off six straight wins, and everything changes. And then, you know, oh, he's great, look what he's done, he saved the team, you know, we were at the bottom of the barrel, and now we're rising to the top, and we're, we are challenging for a playoff berth. And we just really don't know. And we're only as good as the game we just played, so I'm curious how they come out of this this loss, which was demoralizing as hell, right. and then play, play a really tough game against it a division opponent who has gotten better since week three. I know, yeah, by the way, Garrett Henry's still looking to run for another 200 yards. All right, Lewis, you have one point before I ask you the final question. We only have a few minutes to go. David, if we're speculating about possible head coaches, this is speculation to the to the 11th degree, but, I mean, Josh McDaniels possibly over there? Look, he almost had the Colts job. He would have been Chuck Pagano's successor prior to that Super Bowl that they lost to Foles in Philadelphia two years ago. But if if Brady continues to have his problems, you know, that he's complained about with the offense, particularly the run game and the running back by committee and the Sony Michelle struggles, and he boots for, say, the Chargers or another team next season, do you think we begin to see a breakdown? And with that, you know, McDaniels makes his way over down to Jacksonville? It's a reach. I can see what, where you're going with it. I really believe what happened is, is that McDaniel took that job and he said to take it. And they said, whoa, hold on. You're going to succeed Belichick. We've already decided that. Hang on. He's not going to be coaching much longer. A few more years. Stay here and it's yours. That's what I've heard, so I don't too. So no, I don't know if he wants to give that up. Okay. And your final thought about that scenario with Marone and Caldwell. No. Yeah. Shot is going to decide whether or not he's going to 
provide a clean house and start over, which means he's got to find a new executive, he's got to find a new general manager, he's got to find a new head coach, find a new coaching staff. I also said that because of his uh, last two draft classes, Dave Caldwell may have saved his job because the 2018 class is better this year than it was last year. Kevin Bryant's playing better. DJ Chark is, is a Pro Bowl type player. Ronnie Harrison is going to be a Pro Bowl player next year. Um, it, it is a better crop than it was, obviously, in its first season. And this year's rookie class is one of the best in the NFL. Based on that, and the fact that DJ Hayden is paying off in free agency from last year, and the Jaguars did make a few moves, and if the X factor falls, but you got to get on a pass because of the injury, Caldwell stays. Then there's Marone, and you know, he's the guy that falls on the sword, and he takes the loss, and they fire him. It's also conceivable that Shad Khan and, and, and Tom Coughlin get together and say, okay, what do we have to do to finish this, this team? And both Marone and Caldwell are gone, and Coughlin is still standing, which means he gets to pick the head coach. That's By the way, that's where I think Don Capers comes in. Okay. Interesting logic. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, it, well, I... I I'm, you know, I'm, I've got that fuzzy logic deal. I'm, I'm not usually a straight shooter, you know that. Yeah, I can hardly tell. But you're up there, I'm down here. That'll change in two weeks, less than that. Definitely, because uh, we're going live, aren't we? You bet. When we go up there on uh, a week from Sunday, uh, we will be live. Sports Exchange yes. Special Edition up over at TIA Bankfield. Is that what they call it now? How many names have they had yeah. at that place? I don't even know. Just call it the bank. I had <laughs> It's owned by a yeah, bank every right. year. One minute it was ever banked, the next minute it was yeah, TIA it's bank. The bank. On the bank of the St. John's. Is, that's, is that what they call it? There's uh, my clever plug. I remember what it was called, Jacksonville Municipal Stadium, and prior to that, Gator Bowl. So, all right. What the, oh, <laughs> so, I remember when I was a child and it was called the Gator Bowl. Right. We would, go, we would go on, you know, to the Florida-Georgia game every year in the Gator Bowl, you know, bowl game. Right. Yeah, yeah. That was a good history in that film. Uh, So, well, bring it to us on Thursday night. So, uh, I good stuff. I, I always enjoy having you in the program and hang around and uh, let everybody know that I uh, look forward to seeing them face to face. Definitely. I have a, and I'm, I may take, have taken a month from I 95, but I'll get a steady dose of it for the next uh, few <laughs> weeks. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you guys on Thursday. All right. All right. Thank, thank, thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate you. Take well, it easy. Thanks, guys. You bet. Bye. So with that th said, okay, now you get a pretty good feel for what's going on up there. So our next guest, his name is Frank Lodato. He's been around uh, hockey circles a long time, the Canadian Football League. And Frank will be on in a moment. And uh, he's just going to basically give us a perspective on the Don Cherry situation. I'm going to get Frank on in a minute. So, Yeah, I mean, I so I don't know what you think – of the suggestion about the idea of Josh McDaniels going there. I know he's probably no going to be the... Now, if if it all works out and he is the head coach in New England in, say, three or four years, do you think Steve Belichick stays on as a safeties coach or do you think he takes on a large... Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't even go there. I have no idea. I'm clueless there. All I know is McDaniels is going to be the next coach. You know what's funny is when we predicted games, and um, do you remember what your prediction was for that game? I said 33-14 in favor of Jacksonville. And the game went 33-13 Colts. And right score, just wrong team. Yeah, right. Right place, wrong time, or wrong team, wrong, right score, I guess. But right. Look, I don't think Foles was that bad, but the point he made about their offensive coordinator and how he really deviated from running a balanced offense until Sunday because Fournette, Fournette had a line similar to what you saw from him the first year of his career in the NFL. Right. Same thing with Melvin Gordon. And those are kind of the two guys I think of when I think of running backs with first-year right. struggles. But I think it's going to be a problem. I think Foles will only benefit from more Leonard Fournette. Not that he has to carry the ball 30 times a game, but if you give him at least 17 to 20, 21 snaps, you know, your offense is going to be better off. And, you know, obviously that, you know, his success permeated on whether or not that offensive line is healthy. And I'm sure you'd agree with me on that. But yeah, Foles Foles got throw happy. They also seems like he had a problem connecting with receivers. 
that I'm calling in. Yeah, our next guest is uh, Frank Lodato. He'll be on the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network hotline. And Frank uh, will definitely talk about the Don Cherry situation as it will probably unfold. So we're trying to get him on the line in just a moment so we can get his perspective on arguably one of the hotter stories out there in the National Hockey League. Mm -hmm. so. Your call has been forwarded. But um, I, I thought it was... In your in your estimation, though, while we wait for Frank to come on, if, you know, say Marone does wind up, you know, leaving after the season, say they wind up like 6-10 and 10 or 7-9, and nine, you know, David obviously listed a bevy of candidates who would make a lot of sense. Who, in your estimation, do you think is the best fit if Marone isn't the guy in 2020? Oh, I'm going to go back to what I said before. I believe Mike McCarthy would be a great hire. I think, yeah, I think he would do a lot to invigorate that city. Although, I will, I would make this argument. And uh, remember one thing, though. He coached in a small town with Green Bay, and I think Jacksonville was an ideal fit mm -hmm. for him. That, that town is all things football. You know what? It reminds me of, is he call, he's in. It reminds me a lot of um, when Ozzie Guillen left the White Sox to go to the Marlins. Obviously, he had a World Series coaching on the south side of Chicago. Well, Frank? Uh, we're having some technical difficulties. Barely me. But I don't... So, I think McCarthy going to Jacksonville would be good. I mean, obviously, we saw the relationship that he established with Aaron Rodgers, which was beneficial to the success that they had. They won a Super Bowl there, and Rodgers won his first MVP with McCarthy there. I believe he won both of his MVPs with McCarthy there. But, yeah, look, I, I think... And I've heard a lot of ramblings about McCarthy's dealings with the media. He's not really... He's a guy who can give you a good soundbite. Thing is, though, he can get a little fiery at times, though he does... You know, his his presence, It looks he looks even keel, but I think he's sneaky, fiery with a lot of the comments that he makes. Jacksonville may need that. If what you and David are saying about Marone being kind of this, like, 50-50 guy where he doesn't really like to explode on you, he's always, like, water at, water at bay. I mean, yeah, maybe they need to light a cracker under, a firecracker under them to well, light we'll, something. We'll see. It's I, all speculation. I think that's good for the for the fan base, though, and that's probably where you're coming from mostly. So, I'm not I'm not sure. I think you know Tennessee will be a good test for them as they move forward. You know, five and five. It's crazy that we're still talking about them as a player. Well, one for more options. It's crazy that we're still talking about them as a playoff team, given the fact that they're four and six. But I think we discussed that last week when we talked about how balanced, you know, the the AFC South is. I think that's just a very well-rounded division. And, you know, it's. I mean, to to be you know this this late into the season and still be talking about yourself as a playoff team when you're below five hundred, I think. You know, they need to benefit from the fact that they, you know, we don't, Tannehill's looked good in the three games that he started there, but we don't know what we're going to get with him moving forward. Obviously, his future in Miami was always in flux. It was, you know, the biggest question with him is whether or not he could play a full game of football without, you know, being a liability. And, you know, so far he's been, I believe he's 2-1 as a starter over there in Tennessee. He's looked solid, but, I, I mean, yeah, look, if me and anybody here can provide some wisdom, given despite my limited football knowledge, I would argue that you know the NFL or yeah, Frank, what's going on? Yeah, I would argue yeah, Jacksonville just needs to really put an emphasis on that run game. Look, their offensive coordinator needs to preach that balanced offense that he did not run over there in Minnesota. Obviously, Kirk Cousins struggles that first year with the Vikings, maybe attributed to that, and you know he's played well in Minnesota since, given the fact that they have a new offensive coordinator. But, you know, we have Frank Lodato here. He's about to get on and talk some hockey. Yep, yeah, we're going to talk about Frank Lodato. All right, Frank, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, now, this is a bad phone to call me on because I might lose power. Well, okay, right now, the other one wasn't a good phone to call you because you didn't have it, so. I had it right on my hand. Okay, well, we'll make the best of it. How's that sound, okay? Okay, okay. All right, anyways, uh, Let's talk about the uh, firing of Don Cherry. Uh, what were your thoughts about it when it took place? Well, I think you have to be very careful in this. 